So, almost an entire year ago, I made a video ranking the three campaigns of Shovel Knight, and as of right now, there are still only three. In fact, we don't even have a solid release date for King of Cards yet. I will definitely be making a video or two about King Knight once he's out, but for now I want to discuss an issue I mentioned in that Shovel Knight ranking video. In fact, this is something I've thought about quite a bit ever since making that video, partially because it was my only objective critique of the gameplay of Shovel and Plague Knight. I still stand by my subjective reasons for Spectre Knight taking the number one spot for gameplay and overall, but I want to dig deeper into some of the questions and issues I have surrounding Shovel Knight Treasure Trove's items. For instance, why did I rarely use any relics besides the phase locket? Why does Plague Knight have so many useless arcana? And why did I understate the usefulness of Spectre Knight's simplest but most effective curio, the Will Skull? And of course, the question in the title of the video, what is the worst item in the game? First of all, I love Shovel Knight. All three campaigns of Shovel Knight Treasure Trove are wonderful games for reasons that everyone else on the internet has already made 10,000 videos about. That said, no game is perfect, and I have very mixed feelings on the way that Yacht Club chose to handle items in this game. And just so we're clear on my terminology here, if I ever refer to a character's individual set of items, it'll be by its official in-game name. Relics for Shovel Knight, Arcana for Plague Knight, and Curios for Spectre Knight. But the most important thing to specify is that I'm using items as an umbrella term for these three things, since they aren't given an overarching official name, and I don't want there to be any confusion about what the word item means in the context of this video. Money, health and mana pickups, armor upgrades, stage gimmicks like this dude's head. These could all be called items too in a general sense, but specifically in this video when I say items, I'm talking about relics, arcana, and curios. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. So what exactly is my beef with items? Well, it's a bit complicated, but the best thing to start with is the fact that the items are 100% optional. Shovel and Plague Knight even have feats for beating the game without items, though Spectre Knight strangely doesn't have a feat for this. Maybe they thought Spectre Knight without his curios was just too easy to warrant a feat? I'm not really sure. Regardless, a lot of my complaints with items in general stems from the fact that they are optional. Now, this optionality itself is not a problem. In fact, I think it's pretty impressive that a game with this much depth and variety can be completed without requiring any changes to the player's basic moveset. I mean, there's a lot of just stuff in each campaign. Besides just the items, you can get upgrades for your health, magic, armor, and weapons, but it's all up to you. And in a modern game space that's so often focused on just getting a required item to do the next story mission, or getting enough money to buy that next upgrade and then I'll finally be able to beat that guy with the chainsaw on his head. With all of that being the norm, the ability to finish a game in the exact state in which you began is a rare feature and something that I think should be praised. However, it can't help but cause some amount of conflict between the level design and the items in the game. The logical consequence of making items optional is that each and every item needs to be balanced very, very carefully. Every item ideally needs to be useful, but not mandatory, and in each level the player should encounter plenty of situations where items will be helpful, but there cannot be even one single situation where an item is necessary. And I'm not talking about optional areas like the Forest of Phasing, I'm simply talking about the stages needed to beat the game. Another important thing to note is that most of the items for each character are heavily combat focused, as in most of them are just different ways to attack enemies. But most of the difficulty in this game doesn't come from the combat, it comes from platforming. Spectre Knight especially has a basic moveset that's diverse and powerful enough that most players are hardly ever going to be wanting for a ranged attack. And making items that are helpful for platforming without just giving the player 10 get out of jail free cards and completely trivializing all platforming challenges, well, that's hard to do. Out of Shovel Knight's 10 relics, only one, the Propeller Dagger, is specifically for platforming. Spectre Knight has one, arguably two curios for platforming, and Plague Knight has two, which makes sense since his control scheme is the toughest to master, and a lot of the challenge of Plague of Shadows does come from the platforming. But still, almost all items in the entire game are combat focused, and most of the time a skilled player isn't going to need much help with combat. So, because no one is perfect, most of the items in the game fall into one of two categories. And this applies for all three campaigns. Almost every item is either, one, so specific or weak as to almost never be needed, or they're so broadly useful that they end up being more powerful than most of your arsenal. The first category, and stuff like the Staff of Striking, are the ones that are just kinda... Uh, why... how is this useful? I don't know. I think, funnily enough, 
Plague Knight's Arcana are often so weak because he's already got so much variety in his basic attacks with different bomb casings, powders, and fuses that there's just not really much need for him to have powerful items. He's already got three, sometimes four jumps, and once you get pretty good with him, the only super useful arcana are things like the Vat, just to let you recover from platforming mistakes. Plague Knight doesn't have any arcana that I found to be seriously overpowered, probably because the freedom of movement you get from his bomb burst and extra jumps is honestly overpowered enough, but that unfortunately puts most of his arcana firmly in the first category, too specific or weak to ever be really useful. Health tonics are also plentiful enough that stuff like the leech liquid, which heals you for dealing damage, doesn't feel very impactful. I could usually just slam a few health tonics before a boss, and then I didn't need to use any arcana. But health tonics are not really an item like the kind this video is about, so we won't talk about them for now. Maybe in another video. The Phase Locket is easily the best example of the second category, items that are applicable pretty much anywhere and are extremely powerful. In my video ranking the campaigns, I opined that Shovel Knight's Relic the Phase Locket was the most hideously broken item in the game, and completely crippled boss fights. And while I don't think I was wrong about the Phase Locket, I ended up giving Spectre Knight's Will Skull kind of a free pass, and in hindsight I probably shouldn't have. The Will Skull is also immensely powerful, allowing you to spam heals until you're full health and out of mana, and then just hit the boss a couple of times and use it again. It's essentially an endless supply of health, and you refill it just by doing damage to any enemy. The Phase Locket and the Will Skull basically fill the same function for bosses. The Phase Locket avoids damage, the Will Skull repairs it. And look, I can already hear people saying, ooh, well if you don't like it, just don't use it. Yeah, no, that's faulty logic there, fellas. By that logic, it would be perfectly fine for a game based on challenge to just put a win game button on the main menu that gives you all the achievements and a 100% completed save file. No. On my first blind playthrough, I'm not gonna put house rules on myself to not use certain items. It's a game, it's about winning, and you should expect players to use every tool that you give them. Which is why the real problem with the Phase Locket and the Will Skull is that there's no good reason not to use them. If they had a significant magic cost, or left you super open to attack, or a long cooldown, anything like that, they would be a lot more tolerable and not as universally useful. The Phase Locket has a very minor magic cost, the same as the freaking Fishing Rod. No windup and no cooldown. The Will Skull also has a relatively low cost with a short windup, but also no cooldown. This is why I find the Smoke Bomb from Plague Knight to be a much better designed item that fulfills essentially the same purpose as the Locket and Will Skull. It's worse, and therefore better, because it has the highest cost of any arcana, a decently long windup, and the limitation of needing to stay in the smoke to keep your invulnerability. Imagine if the Will Skull had as long of a windup as, say, the Estus Flask in Dark Souls. It would be way harder to find openings to use it in boss fights, but in exchange it could restore more health. This would make it a much more engaging and fun to use item. If the phase locket had, say, a high magic cost and a long cooldown, you might only break it out for specific boss attacks, instead of just spamming it to be invincible almost the whole fight. The best way I think to summarize this is that each campaign would have benefited from having more high risk, high reward items. As it stands, almost all items are either low risk, low reward, so low reward that you might as well not even use them, or items like the phase locket are no risk, high reward. Some more specific vulnerabilities for the high reward items to make them a little riskier would have gone a long way towards making items a much more dynamic and interesting feature. Now, it's important to note that I am coming at Shovel Knight from the perspective of someone who plays a lot of video games, and who, not to brag, is generally pretty good at them. I'm not saying I'm some pro gamer, or that I'm the best in the world at Shovel Knight, I haven't even done all the feats. All I'm saying is that my first time playing through Shovel Knight, the items prevented me, a marginally more skilled than average player, from having the best possible experience I could have had. I went in thinking that items were necessary, so I collected each one as soon as I could. Could. But when I got to the later levels of the game, I found that I could abuse the phase locket to great effect and basically not need to dodge boss attacks or learn patterns. I could just stand there and wail on them for as long as I had magic. It wasn't a bad experience, I still love Shovel Knight, but when I think back on my first time playing through Shovel Knight's campaign, the most satisfying boss fight was actually the first time I fought Spectre Knight, where I missed the phase locket in his stage and had to learn his patterns and tells, focusing on surviving while getting a hit in here or there. After that point, I bought the phase locket in the village, and well, I never felt that same level of challenge at all after that point. 
On the other hand, I think there is something to be said for looking at items as not really being intended for skilled players. What if we instead see them as tools for helping players who otherwise wouldn't be able to finish the game? Now, I realize that by saying that I'm getting dangerously close to almost talking about the should Dark Souls have an easy mode question slash controversy thing, but that's not what this video is about. The point is, I know plenty of people who probably would not have had the patience to finish any of Shovel Knight's campaigns without the items there to support them. Personally, I would have liked if items were designed just a little differently. I want items that open up new ways to play, items that create new challenges instead of bypassing current ones. I want more items to be risky but rewarding, instead of every item being on a binary between useless and overpowered. The way items were designed and balanced in this game didn't make the exact perfect experience for me, but maybe it was the best way overall to make a good experience for everyone. After all, I still thoroughly enjoyed all three campaigns, and I find that Spectre Knight's New Game Plus mode is far and away the best experience I've had with this game, but that's a video for another time. For now, let's end on the question that that might have made you click the video. What is the worst item in Shovel Knight Treasure Trove? It's one that I haven't mentioned yet, partially because I was saving it for the end, but also because it doesn't quite fit into the useless or overpowered binary. Instead, it's kind of both, I guess? Can you guess what it is? Well, it's the mobile gear. Yeah, I really don't like this thing. And the reason is because most of the time, it's useless but on the occasion that it is useful, it is the most boring thing to use. You just put it down and, hey, look at the interesting platforming challenge they designed for me. Uh, there it goes. Bye bye, see ya. I'm just gonna stand on this little gear thing and ignore all that fun challenge. This is the worst item to me because it's useless almost all of the time, and even when it has a use, it isn't fun. The most fun thing about it is one-shotting Tinker Knight with it, but that's just a gag. The mobile gear is the worst kind of underpowered item in all of Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. It's useless, boring, and instead of creating new fun ways to play, or even just helping a player with a challenge they might be having a hard time with, instead of that, the mobile gear just bypasses challenge. See a challenge, I'm just gonna skip this one, yep, bye bye. Yeah, no thanks on the mobile gear. Shovel Knight Treasure Trove absolutely rules, and I'm sure King of Cards is going to rule too, but the mobile gear sucks. Hey, end of the video bonus, we're talking about April 2018's last two PS Plus free games. There's just not a whole lot to talk about with these games, so I figured I would just put a short review for them at the end of the video. 99 Vitas is a perfectly fine beat-em-up. It controls fine, it looks fine, but its standout feature is absolutely the music. It's pretty much a perfect recreation of Genesis era beat-em-ups like Streets of Rage 2, and I love that stuff. If you like beat-em-ups, or if you have any nostalgia at all for the Sega Genesis like I do, 99 Vitas gets a plus. Besides that, there's not much to this game. And finally, Qbert Rebooted. Uh, this game sucks. Qbert's old and not fun anymore. Qbert with extra directions and admittedly pretty cool music is still just as unfun as classic Qbert. It's repetitive, it's boring, it's hard to control, it's really ugly, and it is just zero fun to play. Hard minus. Anyway, if you liked this Shovel Knight analysis, check out my other video ranking the three campaigns, and subscribe for more Shovel Knight videos, because there will definitely be some. And if you're interested in seeing more detailed reviews of the PlayStation Plus free games, you can check out this playlist of my series, PlayStation Plus or Minus. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, etc., do the YouTube things, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.